Hey, it's Tim, and today I'm going to make two recipes from the book Bread Illustrated by America's Test Kitchen. One is a thin crust pizza that'll have a cheese topping, and the other is Piazza de Piazza la Dere. Say that five times fast. So they use the same crust, so it's the toppings that are different, and there may be a little bit of difference in the way that it's cooked, but we'll find out as we go. So the first step is to make the crust, and it's going to sit overnight. That's 16 and a half ounces, which is 468 grams of bread flour. And we're going to use uh, two tablespoons of sugar and a half a teaspoon of rapid rise yeast and one and a half teaspoons of salt and then we need some cold water which I've kept in the freezer and this is ten and a half ounces of cold water and then we've got a tablespoon of olive oil and what I'm going to do is use my handy mixer, uh, food processor and I'm going to pulse this just a second to mix up the dry ingredients that's easy peasy alright and I could use this uh, thing to pour the liquid in but I may do that with the water, but I'm not doing it with the oil because I would think that I'd probably get it all over the world. So I'm not doing it that way. I'm doing it like that. Okay. So yeah, I'll put this on, put that on, and with it running, I'm going to add this liquid, and this should only take about 30 seconds for this to come together as a dough. That's it. That's a dough right there. Bam. So I got this food processor. This is a Cuisinart and it's, it's um, you know, all your food magazines and your and, and uh, everybody loves this thing. They think it's the greatest as far as food processors go. And I got it at a yard sale about, she uh, whiz, probably 15 years ago and I bet I paid five bucks for it. What a great investment that was. All right, so now I'm going to put this on the counter. Oh yeah, this is nice and cold. So this dough sits overnight in the refrigerator. Longer is better, probably. Won't hurt it. You could let it sit in there for days. I did not know this until I read about it um, a short time ago that the... Uh, Domino's Pizza has their dough shipped in fresh. They don't make it at the individual restaurants. It comes in three times a week fresh. And so they're making their dough ahead and refrigerating it, right? So um, it doesn't hurt. In fact, it can help because just like any no-need bread that um, suggests that you let it proof a long slow fermentation is usually what it's referred to as um, helps build structure helps build flavor and all that stuff so that's what we're going to do we're going to throw this in the bowl and that's why I use such a small amount of yeast because it's got so much time that the yeast is going to develop um, even though it's in the refrigerator it's it's still going to multiply, it's still going to create the gas that we want to make the dough nice and tender and so on. So I'm going to cover that, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator, I'm going to make the sauce also in the food processor. So let me get this cleaned up and I'll be right back. This is an uncooked sauce. All you have to do is pulse the ingredients together in the bowl of a food processor. And it's another one of those, shouldn't take us more than um, 
shoot, a minute. We need a teaspoon of red wine vinegar. Let's count it out, shall we? That's one teaspoon. Okay. And we need some oil. This is a tablespoon of olive oil. And we've got some black pepper, half a teaspoon. I'm sorry, quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon of salt, and some dried oregano, about a half a teaspoon, and we're gonna, we're gonna mince a clove of garlic. We're gonna use our handy garlic press. Obviously, this is um, your your pizza, right? So it's your pizza. So you know, if you like more garlic or less garlic, go for it. That's that. Yeah, that's good enough for me. So the sauce is going to cook on the pizza when the pizza cooks. I'm going to grate some mozzarella cheese, whole milk mozzarella. That's four ounces for one pizza. And this is going to be a half an ounce of Parmesan. This is Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, and uh, I'll grate that. And that's, that's it. This is all that goes on the pizza. Uh, no, we can't possibly use all this sauce on one pizza, so there'll be sauce left over. So this goes in the refrigerator. That's that. Two days later, almost, this dough is ready to be divided, formed into a ball. So, let us proceed. The instructions say to form this into a four inch disc. Close enough. I'm going to fold the outside edges into the middle. And then we're going to roll this into a taut ball with a smooth surface. One, and you notice I didn't worry myself about making that into a four inch round because uh, I just don't think it's that important to be honest. I think what matters is is that you fold it on itself as I did, and then shape it into a ball, as I am. And these will rest covered on the counter for an hour, uh, in which time they're going to come to room temperature, and they'll um, relax. I should put them a little bit further apart. So that if they expand, they won't do so. They won't merge. I don't need I don't need one large ball of dough. I need two smaller ones. All right, I'm gonna lightly cover these with plastic wrap, and I'll be back in an hour. Okay. The dough is rested for an hour, and I've got the ingredients necessary to top a pizza, which are these, and 
to make the Piazza Ladere, which are these. So this is parsley, thyme, and fennel seeds. And the recipe called for Nisoise olives. I've got Kalamatas, and that's what I'm using. Uh, salt, brown sugar, water, onions, a, a uh, non-stick skillet. And they recommend... So I'm going to start this topping by heating my non-stick skillet. And I, they want me to use olive oil, and it just so happens that I, I need anchovies as well. And they're packed in olive oil, so I'm just going to use the olive oil from it to cook the onions. And I'm going to cook these over medium-high heat. Um, just let that warm. I'm going to cook these over medium-high heat. I'm going to add the um, move over time. I'm going to add the sugar, salt, and bring them to caramelizing and then once they're getting ready to be uh, finished caramelizing we're going to add some water to the pan and that will make it easier according to the recipe. It will make it easier to put this on top of one of these. And so I don't know what Piazza Ladere means because I haven't looked it up but it seems to me that since tomatoes weren't introduced into Italy or the rest of Europe until the 1500s, after the uh, Spanish colonized the Americas, they brought back the tomato from the Aztec culture. So tomatoes were introduced into Europe in the 1500s, which means that if Italians, um, or the people that live in the region that we now call Italy, if those folks were making anything like a pizza, it had to be something like this, because they didn't have anything like this, not until after the 1500s. So, this Piazza Ladere uses a pizza dough. That sound is the oven telling me that it is at 500 degrees, and I've got a pizza stone in there heating with the oven, so that's also at 500 degrees, good and hot. Uh... Yeah, so Piazza, Piazza Ladere is a, is a pizza that has no cheese and it has no um, tomatoes. Last, don't go in yet. Alright. So I'm making two recipes at once here, which means I'm, I'm bound to uh, make some mistakes because... Um, it's hard enough for me to do one thing at a time, never mind two things at a time. I watched a YouTube video today of a woman who has been making YouTube videos for uh, seven years, she said. She has somewhere between 700 and 800 total videos on YouTube, and um, she gets a total of about 100,000 or so views per month and she makes a little bit of money from it. Well, on the day that I'm making this combination recipe, pizza and Piazza Ladere, I have 98 subscribers and about uh, 35 videos. So, you know, um, someday, far, far into the future, if I continue to do this, I, I may have enough going on to where um, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll produce some income, which I really don't care about that. Um, you may have, may have noticed or not, I don't know how closely anybody pays attention to these videos, but I never ask people to do the things that uh, YouTube suggest that I ask people to do, um, comment and, you know, subscribe to the channel and so on. And the reason I don't do that is because I'm not, uh, it's not that I don't care about it. That would be, that would be uh, too strong to say. But it, this isn't, 
I'm not doing this in order to generate some income or to build a YouTube following. I don't want to be the next um, YouTube star. I just want to learn how to bake and produce some videos that other people that want to learn how to bake might get some value from. So, you know, different strokes for different folks, so to speak. And, um, I was doing two videos a week for the longest, well, uh, you know, felt like the longest, um, for a while, because the book that I'm using, America's Test Kitchen's book, Bread Illustrated, has, um, about a hundred, I keep saying it's a hundred recipes, um, and, you know, two a week gets me done in a year, and so that was the original idea, but I had to take some time, I didn't have to take some time off, I ended up taking a little bit of time off from doing this, because I had some other things to do, some uh, family time that I enjoyed quite a bit, and um, I don't want this to be a job, so... Um, I appreciate anyone who's watching. I appreciate you watching. I hope that you're enjoying it. If you don't enjoy it and want to tell me why, that'd be wonderful. If you do enjoy it and you want to tell me why, that would be wonderful as well. Um, so these are starting to get a little bit of color. And the brown sugar that is in here is just a half a teaspoon for this fairly large amount of onions. And um, it's there to help the uh, browning, essentially, right? Because sugar caramelizes. Um, it's what caramel is. It's cooked sugar. So, that's that. Alright, that's that. And... Okay, let's see. Let's see So I didn't I didn't shoot a video of me grating the parmesan or the mozzarella cheese. Um, is is that terrible of me? Because people are just so uh, interested in how how to grate cheese. No, I don't think so. Uh, I wouldn't make a video of uh, I, I mowed the grass yesterday. I don't think I'd want to make a video of that either. Um, so these are coming along nicely. All right. So here's the deal. Let me leave this somewhere where I can get to it. All right. So I'm going to make this into a pizza, and I'm going to top it with tomato sauce and these two kinds of cheeses. And let me see how it says to do this. Blah 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 blah. Heat broil, yeah. Blah blah blah. Using your fingertips, flatten to a round, stretch it out. Okay. Transfer it here, spread on the sauce, sprinkle the cheese, followed by the cheese, put it on the baking stone. Okay, so this is kind of a uh, strange um, uh, thing to do. It says heat the broiler. So the oven's been heating, it's at 500 degrees. Um, it's the beginning of August in North Florida. The temperature outside today is about 91. It's been in the mid to high 90s, you know, like it has been in a lot of places for way too long. And I've got an oven. It's uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, roughly 3.30. And I've got an oven that's at 500 degrees. So, um, wow, it's getting hot up in here. But now, I turn the oven off and I turn the broiler on high um, to really heat that stone. And what we're trying to do, according to the book, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a massive amount of heat at the top of the oven. And that is going to um, duplicate as much as it's possible to duplicate in a home kitchen a um, pizza oven or stone-fired pizza situation. So that's a little trick that uh, America's Test Kitchen has, has figured out, and we'll see how that works. I realized um, that 
I did not follow the recipe exactly. Um, you know, I'm sure that if America's Test Kitchen were uh, were paying attention, they'd send me a, a note because they spend quite a bit of energy getting these recipes just right. And when I made the dough, I was supposed to add the liquid and then add the salt and the oil afterwards. So I was supposed to pulse the liquid, which was just water, um, and then add the oil for 10 seconds. Pulse the water into the into the dough that had the, and the flour that had the salt and yeast and so forth, and then add the oil and the salt to it. So. Uh, I didn't do that. I just put it all in at once. Um, I, I can't. I can't see. I mean, I, the dough's been in the refrigerator for 48 hours. It was supposed to be uh, done at two stages. So mix the yeast, the sugar, and the flour in the thing. Pulse for 10 seconds. Add the water. Pulse for 30 seconds, let sit for 10 minutes, add the oil and the um, salt, and then pulse again, and then put it in the refrigerator for 48 hours. It's really hard for me to see, you know, and of course I didn't do it, so I don't know, um, what's the point of the 10 minute rest, right? I don't, I mean, it's been in the refrigerator for 48 hours. What's that 10 minutes going to do? I don't know. So, if this turns out terrible, that's the reason. I didn't let the dough rest before I added the flour. On my mother's side of the family, the relatives' last names are things like Spinelli and Marino and Marchese. Good Italian names from up on uh, Clarence Street in Everett, Massachusetts, and Lynn and Saugus and places like that. Um, so, what does that make me? A pizza expert. No, it doesn't. Don't be fooled. It just means that I've got Italian blood. Look at this. I feel like Tony the Pizza Man. Oh, why does it have to be Tony? Why couldn't it be Giovanni? Alright. Uh, I'm digging it. I think that's good enough. So this is the the uh, the trick to doing this is to make sure there's plenty of flour on this peel. So this this is a peel, yeah, a pizza peel. And uh, now we'll stretch out this dough. I said so doing two things at once. About to screw something up. Oh, the language. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good about pizza. I need a spoon. I'm going to spoon some sauce. Uncooked. So this is a straight from a can. Um... I've 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 read about your uh, your canned tomatoes and how the San Marziano or whatever the heck they're called are supposed to be the best. Um, yeah, I just bought the grocery store brand of diced tomatoes and ground them up to make this sauce. I just I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that on a simple pizza that's um, I don't I don't know that I'd be able to tell the difference. So. I'm not spending three times as much to get fancy sounding tomatoes. I, I do have a can of those fancy sounding tomatoes in the pantry, um, and I intend to make some kind of pasta sauce with it where hopefully I can tell the difference. But I don't think that this pizza is going to be the way to test the, uh, to do a blind taste test of, of tomatoes, as it were. All right. That's all the cheese. 
The ingredient amounts are in the description. This goes in the oven. Huh. It actually came off the peel. That is exciting news, I'll tell you what. And uh, how long does it cook? Eight to ten minutes, going to turn it halfway. Okay, I can do that. And... While that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and add this water. Yep, bingo. Turn that off. Done. One hour, blah blah blah, pat the dough, blah blah blah, flip the boss up and down, heat the broiler, up and down. Oh shoot! So I forgot when you put the pizza in the oven, you turn the broiler off and you turn the oven back on to 500. So I just did that, I screwed up. What am I gonna do? Okay, blah blah blah. Chop the olives. I didn't chop the olives. I got a knife. I got a cutting board. Get out of the way. Thank you very much. And I'm trying to be mindful of the time. I was doing some yard work. I mentioned I mowed the yard yesterday, and I was also doing some trimming of some uh, branches and whatnot, some trees that are a little bit out of whack, had to be pruned, and so I was using these giant, um, you know, they're basically scissors that you cut trees with, and uh, after I got stuff down off the tree, I had to chop them down into smaller pieces because the garbage uh, pickup wants them to be three feet long, and while I was doing that, I thought, man, this would, this would really be bad if I, if I, uh, if I didn't realize what I was doing with these scissors, uh, these giant pruning shears, and, uh, had a finger in the way and just, you know, chopped the end of the finger off. Wouldn't that be terrible? And so, yeah, that would be terrible. And so it would be terrible to, um, chop off the end of your finger with a really sharp knife, but, um, you know, some basic knife skills, right? You hold the knife like this, now it's a, and you keep your thumb out of the way, and now there's nothing to chop. You can't, you can't hardly chop a finger if there aren't any fingers in the way, right? You're holding the blade down and you chop, okay? All right, that's culinary lesson for today. It'd be great if you uh, were watching this and there were some kind of way that we could talk to each other while it was happening, because I could say, hey, remind me that I'm supposed to check this pizza after four minutes and turn it around. But, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to do that, are you? No, you're not. So this, they want this to be an oval shape. I don't know why. could make it as round as a pizza. It's the same thing. Um... Speaking of, there's a, um, a book called How to Cook Everything by, um, uh, I think, Bittman? Uh, Bittman, I can't remember his first name right now. I'll look it up. I'll put a link. And um, he's got a basic French bread recipe, or a basic bread recipe, basic bread recipe. And then he's got variations. You make the same dough, and you make all kinds of stuff. You can make... You know, you make bread dough, and you can form it into hamburger buns or, or a loaf, a sandwich loaf, or you can make uh, just about anything. You make changes to it to, uh, like this has got some sugar in it because it sat in the refrigerator for so long. The sugar gives the yeast something to um, eat. Yeah, that's right. they got to eat something. They get hungry, too. So... Food is very, um, food is very, in a way, 
it's like painting. You have a canvas, you've got some basic colors, and you, you know, you take your basic colors and you combine them in a certain way and you can paint just about anything. Well, food is like that. You take some basic ingredients and uh, combine them in different ways and this one's going to be a pizza, that one's going to be something like a pizza. Maybe you call it flatbread? Let's call it flatbread. Oh, this is looking really good. I like it. I like it. I think what I'm going to do, rather than try to turn the pizza, I'm going to turn the whole pizza stone. I know, sounds crazy, but... Oh, my goodness gracious. Wow, I was in there a little too long. Yeah, I was in there just a little too long, because now I'm about 500 degrees. Holy mackerel. Uh, here's over here. Here we go. Broiler, blah, blah, blah. Brush over. Oh, we've got to brush this with some olive oil. Pardon me. I'm back. Brush with olive oil. Uh, so, you know, uh, this is a really good brush. My hands are clean. All right, that's that. I'm going to put on some of these anchovies. So if you don't like anchovies, um, and if you've had them, right, and you know you don't like them, okay, I get that. But if you haven't had them and you think you don't like them, I recommend that you give them a try, especially in a dish like this. Because you will not know they're there. If you taste this, you are probably not going to taste the anchovy. You will, you will taste a salty, um, uh, umami kind of uh, flavor that comes from them. But, um, you know, I could be wrong. Maybe you will taste the anchovies. What do I know? Maybe you've got the, you've got the super taster. That means the oven's at 500 again. It just keeps doing that. Olives. Anyway, uh, I'm not trying to lecture you about about uh, anchovies. I'm just saying. Now we're going to put the herbs on here. A little parsley. So this all goes under, right? First. So, um, this goes on first because the onions will keep it all from burning in that high heat oven. Um, I chopped the fennel seeds a little bit, ran them under the blade to, I don't know, just made sense to me. You know, now that I'm doing this, hmm, might have been smart for me to, like, get this on the peel before get, getting to this stage. Because this, be, uh, this may be hard to get off the counter. Uh, we'll see. So there are some YouTube channels out there where people cook, and uh, they're good. You know, some of them are really good. Some of them are super popular. And, um, some of them, like, uh, some of them make it appear as though, uh, by the, by the, uh, way that the video is edited, that, um, the person makes this thing and it just, it's just, the recipe is just perfect, it works great, the end result is fantastic, and, um, I get that. I don't do that because, um, one, I'm not that good at shooting videos. Two, um, somebody's got to eat all this food, and I can't make five pizzas while I try to get the 
the recipe exactly right and my technique exactly right so that I am digging this. Check that out. Thin crust pizza. Holy cow. That looks good. Holy cow, that looks good. I'm digging it. Let me see if you can see the... I'm not going to try to show you the bottom, because if I do that, the cheese is going to slide off and burn my hands, and then I'll be using foul language, and nobody wants to hear that. That just won't be a pretty sight. So we'll, uh, we'll just check that in a minute. So that was like eight minutes in the oven. Maybe nine. And, uh, wow, I'm really happy with that. So, yeah, I make these recipes, and, you know, they turn out, or they don't, and you kind of get them warts and all. There have been a couple of times when I've, like, shown how badly it turned out, and then redid it, you know. Um, this is going to be one of those, because I'm not, I'm not seeing how I'm going to pick this up. So, we're just going to go for it. Shoot. Um, let's see what we can do here. Yep, 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 yep. Don't be stupid, Tim. Don't be stupid, Tim. And... You know what? It's going to be rustic. Okay? So, let that be a lesson to you. Don't try to make the... It did come off the pan, though. So don't try to make the pizza, I mean the pizza, piazza ladera, don't try to make that on the counter and then put it on the peel, put the dough on the peel and then dress it on the peel. Alright, so that's got to go for uh, 8 to 10 minutes, turning once. So let's see what we did here, let's see if I can pick this up. Wow, it's hot. Of course it is, it came out of a 500 degree oven, what, are you kidding me? Yeah, let me look at it, I'm going to look at it. Ah, it looks fine, it's a little floury. Put a lot of flour on the pan. Uh, it's going to be fine. How long should you cool a pizza? Uh, long enough to where the cheese isn't going to burn the roof of your mouth. That's how long. Longer than that is not necessary. Alright. Thin crust pizza. So, yeah. A little bit brown on the bottom. Look, it's not a wood-fired oven, right? It's not 900 degrees on the inside, the way your fancy schmancy uh, wood-fired outdoor pizza ovens get. But you saw how long this took. The dough came together in seconds. It waited in the refrigerator 48 hours until I felt like baking pizza. And it took me, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to go from a ball of dough to pizza in the oven? Pizza out of the oven? Mmm. Yeah, that's really good. I like it. Mmm-hmm-hmm. -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. That's really tasty. I like this. So this is whole milk mozzarella cheese in a block. Not the, not the kind that's packed in water. Not that. The stuff that comes in a block. Whole milk. Not part skin. Whole milk makes it creamier. It's really, it's real Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, so the cheeses are, are good and they taste good. The tomato sauce is fresh. It's got just the right amount of flavor. Not too much garlic, not too much salt, not too much oregano. The dough is good. This is Piazza Ladere. Now I know what you're thinking. What did you just call me? No, it's Piazza Ladere. Look at that. That looks really, that looks nice. That looks better than the pizza. The oven's probably 
hotter. Stone's probably hotter. Because they've been going the whole time to preheat and then to and then to uh, cook the pizza. So, but uh, that looks tasty as well. Uh, I'm probably not going to film myself tasting a piece of that because I'm sure that it's just going to be fabulous. But this pizza is worth making. The sauce is fresh. It's tasty. Oh, I was saying the dough. It it develops flavor in that 48 hours. They recommend 24 to 72 hours. I split the difference. 48 hours. And what that allows it to do is, is um, if you eat freshly baked bread and compare it to the taste, especially if it's just white flour, um, and you compare it to the taste of a sourdough bread, the complexity that sourdough has, and it doesn't have to be tangy sourdoughy. You can you can moderate the amount of, of sour flavor, but it just has a complexity to flavor that um, yeast can have a uh, almost laboratory clean kind of thing going on and so allowing this dough to ferment for 48 hours really allows it to develop a nice um, deliciousness so uh, this is thin crust pizza and piazza la dairy and um, I think I'll just say that a lot from now on piazza la dairy I hope I'm pronouncing it somewhat close to right hey get some ingredients together it won't take a lot flour salt yeast water um, some sugar, some thyme, <laughs> both thyme for the Piazza Ladarian thyme. Hey, thanks for watching. Take care.